Welcome everyone to your uh, pink moon, full moon reading. <laughs> Welcome everyone to your full moon reading. This is for the pink moon. Um, this will happen on the 23rd. So let's see what's going on with this pink moon and see how it's going to affect everyone over here. Doing a collective reading. This collective reading is for the, everyone and every sign. Bringing out the best messages of how this moon will affect people coming out please is ivory wishing wish fulfilling crow i do like that though a lot for actually for the understanding of this reading my friends the reason is is because that that is saying that it is time to manifest that it is time to go ahead for the springtime and get those manifestations out um yes you can have what you truly want such knowledge helps soften and release fear grasping control and doubt have confidence that the universe hears your prayers and is even now leading you into which you seek. You can take sanctuary within your spiritual connection whenever you need stabilization and protection against the fluctuations of the external world. And because of what we have just gone through with that solar eclipse um, and, and then having that Mercury retrograde, which is ending on the 23rd, um, you have to understand that with this this energy that's coming through spirit is saying because of the fluctuating energies which that's what this card is talking about it's saying that there is a magical time right now but it's thriving in different ways right so you have to be careful because it can thrive on your negative real easy or your positive real easy why because of the energies fluctuating right because there is no real stabilization at this time it won't level itself up for a little while, but that's just the way that it works, right? So remember, in a lot of religions, uh, we just had the sun just died. So you have to understand that in most Indian religions, the sun was eaten. The sun died. That killed a lot of the um, energy that the sun had brought out, um, not bringing in and destabilizing energies around us so i mean if you talk to the navajo they will say the sun died you know the cherokee everybody right even the choctaws my own people um will say the same thing right the sun just died so this is telling you careful what you're seeing and what you're doing and remember he's crow the crow is of what the crow is the same as the raven it's talking about rebirth right transformation and rebirth so that's what this pink moon is really doing it's kind of stabilizing trying to restabilize what had just happened and it's crazy we have a pink moon all the time but this one is working different on this solar eclipse because the sun just died <laughs> the pearl of Sharo. another good example another great example right there So 35 is the Pearl of Sharo is the taking responsibility for your experiences empowers you. You are going to resolve an issue through spiritual inspirations and higher guidance. You will rise up in full connection to your spirit and access a wealth of divine treasure. That which has brought darkness into your world shall submit to the light and tra be transformed. Now what did I just say? What did we just say? The sun was eaten. It died. The moon ate it. It was surrounded in that darkness. You know? So in many traditions it died. So what is it doing? It shall submit to the light to be transformed because the world was in darkness. Okay. So Sharo is the Tibetan word meaning to arise or manifest and shine with radiant spiritual light. Sharo is the outcome of sacred alchemy. It is the manifestation of the pearl beyond price. Created in the depths of the ocean, hidden away in a clamshell, away from prying eyes. This pearl sim symbolizes a beautiful blessing of unexpected grace. Now remember, it has to come from the unexpected grace, right? While we are still trying to balance everything. So the healing response to that initial intrusion resulted in the organic creation of inestimable 
estimable. Estimable. Hmm. Beauty, value, and uniqueness. So this pearl can be a sacred catalyst. I'm just not sure if I'm saying that word right. I understand estimate. I didn't know what estimable. Okay. Human beings have free will. Without it, there could be no growth, only a following of rules. So there we have. We are going to, therefore, learn, grow, and have choices. There it is. Boom. Boom. Right? And that is. That's the big boom. Because that's all you really have for that situation. So this full moon is actually in Scorpio. So it's an emotional time for relationships. Okay? No matter what. So let's go ahead and clarify on the ivory wishing crow for this new moon or this full moon. Excuse me. It feels like a new moon though in its own way. I think it's because we keep saying it was eaten. <laughs> okay. So with the authority, it comes that control, but that's good. That's good because this is the time though too, that it might make you want to shy away, right? It's going to make you want to shy away from Things that make you want to make decisions, things that make you want to grow. So you might feel a very emotional time. Like I said, for it, definitely in, a, in relationships. You're going to feel a lot of turbulence. That's for sure. And then, of course, you have the, temp, the temptations coming out. But we were talking about, that's crazy because I feel like it should go over here because we were just talking about how it has the temptations to do so. Not feeling like you're free just yet, right? Because the darkness to the light. So I do feel like sometimes we'll just put it over there. Because I do feel that that's exactly where it is. Because yes, and then it says because underneath that is spiritual growth. And we just said because it'll bring in that light from the darkness into the spiritual growth. Ooh. Okay. Well, alrighty. So then we have lots of turbulence, lots of chaos and emotion. Yep, saying the lack of direction. There's that lack of direction, though. And that's that feeling like you're shying away from something. Feeling like something is going within your own area. Yeah, having the turbulence. Feeling like things are up in, up in the air. Feeling like things are not being orchestrated the right way. So you might even feel like the way that things are divinely orchestrated are kind of out of place. And that's because of that imbalance. Which is weird because it's just saying that you're going to have to have a lot more faith when it comes to the situation. It's kind of crazy because if you watched last year's, it wasn't like that at all. But then again, we had a solar eclipse, but it was not a total solar eclipse. So it was making it a lot different. Right? It was making it super different. Um, so following your own heart. Absolutely. But see, this is going to make you overly emotional where you should be following your heart, nurturing the situation. So therefore, it's saying this is where you're going to feel, especially with the Pearl of Sharo over here. I'm going to put it there because it does feel like that's where it's coming off of. That spiritual strength is saying this is because you're going to feel over emotional, but you're going to want to nurture the situation and find that things around you need to be stable. So you're going to find that you are feeling like maybe I should be more reliable in these areas. Because this is where that, uh, it's like a turbulence of chaos and emotions from order. You see it though with the Tower and the Queen of Pentacles. That's what I'm getting from the Tower and the Queen of Pentacles. It's like the turbulence. Look at that. It's like a, it's the chaos to order. But without chaos, we can't have order. Right? It's always chaos to order anyways. But it's like... Uh, Emotional order, though. It's definitely emotional order. Okay, so it's going to feel like a, like you want to get yourself to back to an emotional order. That way you can feel like the flow will still be happening. It can be like a new flow. Yeah, because you're going to feel like you're having extra responsibilities and going in all these different, yeah, wanting to leave behind extra responsibilities that feel like they're not going to serve you anything. With the Six of Swords, it's a lot of emotionals again because of you have all these emotions in there. Well, this is now going to be thinking. 
But I see the swords as not so much thinking as much as it is emotions. So maybe thinking about carrying the emotions, moving to the calmer water waters of that situation because you're going to feel like you are overloaded with the situation. So however you're going to say it, right? It's still going to be the same. Yeah, making your last stance. So it's definitely going to feel like you're going to be holding back on a lot of things that you really feel like you want to hold back on. But there's also this piece within you that's going to say, but I want to bring in this kind of faith with me um, from that chaos to order where it's going to feel like no matter what, though, I want to plant these seeds. I just have to find the balance. There it is again, that balance. Wanting to find that balance from the old to the new. And that Scorpio, obviously, you know, is obviously, you know, is Scorpio is <coughs> not only the tower, excuse me, but also the death, um, the death card, right? Transformation. And it's talking about that chaos transformation with the crow. So definitely feeling like there is definitely going to be this balance that you're going to feel very overloaded with when it came, when it comes to this situation and definitely going to want to follow your heart. And after that, it's all over. You're going to feel like the high priestess. Wow. Wow. You're going to feel like the high priestess because you're going to feel like you were in the knowing, like you learned something from the situation, that everything from the darkness to the light came about. And I kind of feel that that's where you're going to find that authority as well in the end, where you're going to feel like, okay, hold on. I feel like something from my inner truth came in. I feel like I'm, I'm I don't know. And it's, whoa, it's going to make you want to run faster at this at the end of the situation because it is it's going to make you feel like okay now I can move quicker in these areas because now I feel like I've got what I need it's almost like you got some kind of download with the high priestess and even though you feel like you're wibbly wobbly and you're not going to feel like you're going you know maybe you were even kind of sitting on your feelings um in some ways it just feels like once it's gone and once that that full moon is over it's going to start afresh Right? It's going to start something new and it, it's going to tell you this is the direction you should be probably going in because now it's going to fill you with this courage um, and this determination. But it's also going to I kind of like push you onto a new direction with different views of maybe even the way you want to progress things. See what I'm saying? So it's kind of like it's changing the flow in a lot of ways. Because you're having this kind of sudden awareness of the things that were going up. I, I think it's also bringing in things that were not justified within your life. So that you can say, okay, well, you know what? Then that's fine. I'm going to ride through this. Then I'm just going to sow these seeds over here. And then hopefully by, you know, May, I'm going to receive these, these seeds. Or really get them going to where things are actually productively moving. And I, I just feel that though too. Yeah. And definitely because you have the seven of, because of the seven of. See, because right now you're kind of like holding back. You're saying, I'm not going to take the fool's risk right now because something I don't feel right, right? And it's not a good time to be taking a fool's risk. Anyway, it's a good time to manifest. But you're saying, I'm going to sow the seeds. The best way to do this right now because of the over emotions is probably just to sow the seeds and the actions that you really need to take at this time. Probably a visualization, writing and visualization because right now it just feels like everything you're going to touch is not going to turn to gold <laughs> right for at least a, a couple of days um it's definitely having kind of a weird sight you know what i mean it's kind of sidetrack it's, it's like sidetracking everyone a little bit everybody's gonna feel not as grounded as you, you usually feel so if you guys know that you're already feeling that way Right? Let me know in the description box, right? Or in the uh, whatever box. And that that's because, remember, we had that darkness that prevailed. So I just, yeah, your energy is not going to be very grounded. To really direct your guys' self to ground yourself, take off your socks and shoes and walk on the ground itself. Plant your feet on the dirt, on the ground, um, to really start to kind of ground yourself. Right? Meditate, stuff like that, if you're not feeling very grounded. That will help clear the mind. But big things, yeah, I would say manifestation through visualization and scripting. 
you know, pictures, picture boards, stuff like that. Really taking the action, though, I don't really see that. Like I said before, I don't really see the, the super action. And that's because of the high emotions. Yep. You take the super action. See, because it's after. So it's like next month, you know, it's like after. When the new moon comes, that's when you want to start taking that action, right? Visualize it again, do what you need to do, then start taking that action. Because no matter what, it'll all, it'll be surrounded in itself, right? Getting them out there. Yeah, just using that self-expression. Spirit says right now is a good time for self-expression. That way with the high expectations that you have, right, it'll actually feel more achievable than actually taking the action because then the action could feel more haphazard. Literally says that. Right there. Right. Okay. And that was it for you guys. And good luck on this pink moon. Um, remember the pink moon is also about, a, a, you know, love. Right? But because of the emotions being so high... <laughs> And, be, and because of the solar eclipse and stuff, right, it's just not moving the way it usually would move. Like, if you went back and watched last year's, it'd be, wow, you know, it's I if I remember right, last year was super romantic. And, you know, this one's kind of like jumbly all over the place. Like, ooh, everybody, protect your energies, right? I mean, seriously, like, ooh, ooh, be careful, right? <laughs> okay, my friends, until next time.